Let's go over what a maximal circuit in a graph is. As a quick recap, recall that a circuit is a sequence of adjacent vertices that begins and ends at the same vertex, so we might call it closed, and it repeats no edges. So it can repeat vertices, can't repeat edges. The vertices and edges traversed by a circuit make a subgraph. So we could take all the vertices and edges from a circuit and call that a subgraph. That subgraph is also called a circuit. Circuit, and it is the subgraph type of circuit that we're really talking about today. So before we read this definition of a maximal circuit, let's see a quick example of what we just went over. In this graph, if we go from B to A to F, then back to B, then to D, then to C, and then back to B, that is an example of a circuit, which we could represent as this sequence of vertices. When we say a circuit is a sequence of adjacent vertices, we mean that consecutive vertices in this sequence are adjacent. So B and A are adjacent, A and F are adjacent, F and B are adjacent, and so on. Really, this just means that in a circuit, we're only allowed to go from one vertex to another if there is an edge joining them. So this sequence is a circuit because it is a sequence of adjacent vertices. It starts and ends at the same vertex, and it doesn't repeat any edges. You may notice that we also repeat B in the middle of this circuit, but again, that's okay. A circuit can repeat vertices. It can repeat any of its vertices, not just the starting and ending vertex. It just can't repeat edges. Of course, since we've represented this circuit just as a sequence of vertices, we haven't explicitly laid out the edges that we are traveling across, but they are implied based on which vertices are adjacent in the circuit. Since B is followed by A, of course, our circuit travels through the edge BA. Since F is followed by B, of course, our circuit travels through the edge FB. Some authors and textbooks will be a little more explicit about the edges and actually include them in the sequence that describes a circuit, but for a simple graph, that's really not necessary. So for our purposes, the vertices in this sequence, which is a circuit, as well as the implied edges, make up a subgraph that I've highlighted here, which we would also call a circuit. And if we call this graph G, then what we've highlighted is a circuit of G. Now our definition of maximal circuit. Let the subgraph C be a circuit of a graph G, like this circuit that we have here. Then C is a maximal circuit if V of C, that's the vertex set of the circuit, is not a proper subset of the vertex set of any other circuit. And this is very similar to our other definitions of maximal objects in graph theory. So if we call this circuit that we've highlighted and the sequence of vertices that represents it C, is C a maximal circuit? Again, the idea of a maximal circuit is that there doesn't exist another circuit containing all of these vertices and additional vertices. So C is maximal if there's no circuit that has all of C's vertices and more. The answer in this case is that C is not a maximal circuit. To see why, all we have to do is identify another circuit in this graph that has all of C's vertices and more. We can easily find such a circuit just like that. That circuit contains all vertices of the graph, so it certainly contains all vertices from C, and it contains vertices that C doesn't have, like E. Pay special attention to the fact that it's the vertex set of C that is a proper subset of this other circuit that we just highlighted. The edge set of C is not a proper subset of the edge set of the circuit that we just highlighted. For example, C contained the edge BD, and our current circuit does not contain that edge. So when we talk about a maximal circuit, we're talking about maximality with respect to the vertex set. 
By the way, what we've highlighted here happens to be a cycle, and of course, it contains all vertices of G, so that is called a Hamilton cycle. Now, it may be the case that you, or the author of something that you're reading, wants to consider maximal circuits with respect to edges, but in the papers I've seen, a maximal circuit has to do with the vertex set, not the edge set. Going back to our circuit C, if we were considering maximality to involve the edge set, then this would be a maximal circuit. There is no circuit of G that contains all the edges C does and more. To verify that, notice that in a circuit, every vertex needs to have an even degree. This is because every edge that you take to get to a vertex, well, you must also have another edge to leave the vertex, and so every vertex ends up having even degree. Thus, in order to expand this circuit by including more edges, we would need to include an even number of edges incident to any vertex. In other words, if we decide to include an edge that is incident to the vertex A, which already had an even degree, we would need to make sure that we're including an even number of additional edges so that the degree of A is still even. However, A has only one edge that hasn't been included in our circuit, so there's no way we could expand the circuit by including edges that are incident to A. We have the same problem with the other vertices. If we wanted to expand this circuit with more edges, say we wanted to include an edge that is incident with the vertex F. Again, we would need to make sure that we include an even number of additional edges incident with F, so its final degree is also even. But we only have one possible edge that we could include that's incident with F, and so there's no way we could do it. So that's just a quick look at the situation if we were considering maximality with respect to edges. But again, the definition we're really focused on is maximality with respect to the vertex set. Of course, since this graph, as we pointed out, has a Hamilton cycle, which happens to be a circuit containing all vertices of the graph, no circuit of this graph will be maximal unless it contains all vertices of the graph. For example, here's another circuit, which also happens to be a cycle, but of course, its vertex set is a proper subset of this other circuit, which contains all of its vertices and then some. So what we've highlighted now is a maximal circuit. There's no circuit in the graph that contains all of those vertices and more, of course, because such a thing would be impossible since this circuit contains all vertices of the graph. Then you may think, of course, this circuit is maximal since we're talking about the vertex set, but is it possible that we could find a circuit in this graph containing all the vertices and all the edges? The answer is no, and again, it comes down to the parity of the degrees of the vertices. A circuit of a non-trivial connected graph that contains all of its edges must also contain all of its vertices. That's just unavoidable if it has all of the edges. And such a circuit is called an Euler circuit. And here is a well-known theorem called the Euler circuit theorem. A non-trivial connected graph G contains an Euler circuit, like we said, a circuit with all edges of G, if and only if every vertex of G is even, meaning it has even degree. Here's a graph similar to the one we were previously looking at, but with a few additional edges. In this graph, every vertex has even degree, so we should be able to find an Euler circuit, a circuit that contains all of its edges, and I've provided one here. We go from F to A, and then from A to B, and then from B to C, and then from C to D, from D to E, from E to C, from C to A, from A to E, from E to F, then to B, then to D, and then to F. And I've highlighted an Euler circuit. Again, notice the defining properties of a circuit. We begin and end at the same vertex, and consecutive vertices in the circuit are adjacent. 
You can also see in this example of a circuit that many vertices are repeated multiple times. And again, that's perfectly fine. The key is that none of the edges are repeated. Once more, taking a look back up at our first graph, notice that the degree of A is three, the degree of F is three, just for a couple examples. So clearly G doesn't have an Euler circuit because not all of its vertices have even degrees. And I'll leave a link in the description to a lesson I made proving the Euler circuit theorem. So check that out if you're interested. And that's it for now. Again, a circuit C is a maximal circuit if its vertex set is not a proper subset of the vertex set of any other circuit. So a circuit is maximal if there's no circuit containing all of its vertices and more. Made my skin crawl. I fasted till I grew thin. And it felt good. It looked good, it made my skin small. Dreams of you are the closest I come.